What's up guys, this is Nick with Outrage Productions. We're out here at the 2015 Maryland Irish Festival in Timonium, Maryland. Let's go take a look around. So I'm here at Brutwin Apparel with Ali. Ali, tell us a little bit about your company. So the company was started in November of 2010 uh, by me, actually. So we've grown exponentially over the years. We started out of a dorm room. We now have an office space in Phoenix, Maryland. Uh, over 900 products. We're state themed, so we sell everything from bikinis to board shorts to everything in between. Okay, that's awesome. Uh, is there anything new coming out that you guys should like let the people know about? We actually just launched these uh, book bags you can see right behind you. We have three different styles. Uh, we release over 30 new designs a month, so. That's awesome. So what you got you big into the Maryland flag stuff? Are you from Maryland? Yes, I'm originally from Maryland. I was born and raised. Originally from Hartford County, now I live in Baltimore County. Awesome. So uh, where are you guys from, where are you located, and where can people find you? So it started at University of Maryland, where we just sold things to our friends and family. We now have a website, RouteOneApparel.com. Uh, we have an outlet store in Hunt Valley, and we wholesale to over 40 locations across the state. And uh, one more question before we go. Is there a certain age group or demographic that you'd like to uh, target your stuff to? We started with college students, but it's definitely grown over the years. Um, I've seen 70-year-old women rocking our scarves, and we have onesies over here. So we're really branching out and catering to the whole Maryland demographic. Awesome. Great. Yeah, we have a lot of cool stuff here. Um, we can't wait to see where your company goes. I'm sure it's going to take off. Thanks so much. Thank you very much, Allie. Thank you. Okay, so I'm here with Rob from the Potomac Valley Irish Wolfhounds Club. Rob, tell us a little bit about the club. Okay, it's a it's a local club from Maryland and, and Northern Virginia. It's been around since about 40 years, for about 40 years. And its job is to let people know about wolfhounds, take care of the wolfhounds, figure out, you know, make the breed better. They're actually the national dog of Ireland. Okay. And so it's one of the reasons we're here. Um, they're, uh, they're actually a good family dog, but they're just big. Okay, Robin, one more thing. Um, where would you get a dog like this? Do you get it from a breeder, or can anyone get it, or uh, certain owners that only can have them? Okay, actually, they go through the breeder. One of the jobs of the club is to make sure that the dogs are healthy and that they don't just go to anybody. So the breeders are very particular. The last thing we want is somebody getting a hold of one of these dogs and then trying to make them mean. Um, they were near extinct at the time of the American Civil War and an English colonel decided to bring them back, but he wanted a gentle dog. So he bred the aggression out of them. And so that we can bring them to a place like this and not have a problem. So what you don't want, what we don't want is somebody to think that they could fight these dogs. So we're very cautious. So it's normally with a breeder, you're not gonna find them in a pet store or things like that. Right. Okay. Great, and they all seem like very calm, friendly dogs. Well, this is excited. Okay. This is what we call excited. We actually right. have to work to make them excited. Right. So I'm here with Wayne Hansen from Breeds Across America. Wayne, do you think you could tell us a little bit about your organization? Sure. Breeds Across America is a 501c3 nonprofit organization that was started as a result of a wreath project that began in 1992 back at Arlington. Uh, the founder of Breeds Across America, Moral Worcester, as a 12-year-old, had won a trip to Washington, D.C. And as part of that trip, he toured Arlington Cemetery when he went back home to Maine and got through college and started into the wreath business. Uh, in 92, he had uh, a few thousand wreaths left over at the end of the holiday season. And they were saying, what are we going to do with these wreaths? And uh, he started checking. He says, I want to take them down to Arlington National Cemetery to thank the veterans for their service and sacrifices. Uh, Morrill is not a, a, a veteran himself, but he appreciates what the veterans have done to give him the freedoms that he had had at the time. So they checked with uh, uh, Olympia Snow, our senator from Maine at the time, and they checked with Arlington and they said, well, nobody's ever done anything like that before, but uh, what the heck, if you want to do it, come on down. And he got a truck donated and they loaded 5,000 wreaths onto that truck. And it so impressed him uh, and the cemetery that uh, they said uh, he wanted to do that every year. So from 1992 until 2005, he brought down 5,000 wreaths to Arlington and they spread them throughout the cemetery. 
In 2005, one of the volunteers we had there at the time was an Air Force photographer, okay. and he took what we call our iconic picture of the wreaths in the snow and put it on the internet, and it went viral. People did not believe that this had been going on for so long. Uh, they thought that the government did it. Uh, we received no government funding. We rely on individual sponsorships and corporate donations to help us. So from 1992 with 5,000 wreaths, uh, last year we placed over 716,000 wreaths wow. at over 1,000 locations across the country. It's grown from one cemetery and one truckload to 716,000 wreaths at over 1,000 locations last year. Wow, that's a very interesting story. Um, so where can we find you? Where are you guys located? Well, you can find us on uh, at our website, wreathsacrossamerica.org. Uh, we have Facebook pages. They can go on the Facebook on Reese Across America also. Uh, we're, uh, we're there. We're, check us out, please. Uh, help us. You can go online and sponsor a wreath. It's $15 to sponsor a wreath. Uh, every wreath is placed on a veteran's grave to thank them for their service and sacrifice. Okay, awesome. And uh, one more question. How long have you guys been coming to the Irish Festival? Well, this is our second year with uh, here at the Irish Festival. Uh, we've been to the one that they have in Annapolis also last year, so we've been there a couple of years. Uh, Dan Mead, the president of the Irish Charities of Maryland, uh, is a very uh, active supporter of Reese Across America. He's a fundraiser for us, and he allows us to come here and, and put out our display so everybody can uh, see what we do and why we do it. Awesome. Well, I wish you the best of luck, Wayne. Right. Thank you very much for your Thank time. You yeah, it's a very interesting story. Well, guys, we had a really fun time today at the Irish Festival. Did a lot of cool stuff, met a lot of cool people, saw some cool dogs, but uh, got to go. I got some stuff I got to take care of.